long before Ron Simmons was awarded the WCW title in 1992 against Vader, and before Bearcat Wright became a recognised world champ after going over Killer Kowalski and Classy Freddie Blassie in the early 1960s. Before Kenny Monday took Olympic gold for the USA in the 1988 Summer Olympics freestyle event in Seoul, Korea. The first black world champion in competitive professional wrestling was a much less heralded athlete originally from the Caribbean. Born in Jamaica in 1882, Frank Crozier spent the early years of his young adult life labouring the shipyards as a mechanical worker in the machinery department. Still under British rule and thus a UK territory, Crozier was able to emigrate from Jamaica at the turn of the 20th century and found work on the docks of Govan, a former borough that is now a part of southwest Glasgow in Scotland, a parish that sits on the south bank of the River Clyde. Crozier became a frequent gym-goer and adept of physical culture, and by chance caught the eye of another Govan resident, Alex Munro. A great of the early Highland Games and originally from Brora, Munro was a strongman, future Olympian in the now defunct tug of war event, and more pertinently, a British heavyweight champion wrestler in the catch as catch can style. Once even wrestling the legendary George Hackenschmidt at the Ibrox Stadium in front of 22,000 people in July of 1905. Munro was working as a police inspector and the police gyms of Govan, Patrick and Glasgow were hotbeds for wrestling at this time. After meeting Crozier and striking up a rapport and friendship over their love of sport and fitness, Munro invited Crozier to his gym to train. Under his tutelage, Crozier became a Scottish wrestling champion in 1906. In a 1908 tournament hosted at Hengler Circus on Saucy Hall Street, Glasgow, Crozier placed third after a hotly disputed semi-final match with American Sam Anderson. A reportedly ill-tempered bout not helped by Crozier suffering an injury in an earlier round. Anderson would lose to Henry Erslinger, a veteran middleweight wrestler and one of the only men to hand defeat to Mitsuyo Maeda, the forefather of Gracie lineage Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. In August of that year, Munro attended a Scottish Highland Games gathering in London, which coincided with the Summer Olympic Games hosted there at the same time. It was an opportunity for Munro to scope out the likely competition his protégé might face in the future. By January 1909, Munro had entered Crozier into the world-famous National Sporting Club of London International Tourney at the Alhambra Theatre, London. The event took place over several weeks and attracted wrestlers from around the globe, including mainland Europe, the Middle East, South and East Asia and the Americas. From the 28th of January to the 9th of February 1909, Frank Crozier wrestled six times and saw himself become the middleweight champion, the first black world champion in competitive wrestling. Presented to Crozier was the Lord Lonsdale belt, akin to boxing's equivalent and commissioned and made especially for the tournament winners at the Alhambra. At the following year's tournament in 1910, Crozier would lose in the semi-finals to Bhutan Singh, an Indian wrestling champion who toured Western Australia years earlier as part of a circus that entertained Gold Rush prospectors. Singh would go on to lose Crozier's previous finals opponent, Bob Berry, who had bested Singh in the opening round of the 1909 tourney. Despite being a former world champion, Crozier was unable to make a sustainable living from wrestling alone, and so also ventured into the world of boxing. He would serve as a strength and conditioning trainer for other boxers, and by 1911 he ventured out of the UK and into Europe to become more of an international competitor in both wrestling and boxing. First competing in Paris, he travelled into and throughout Spain with other fighters. The Spanish cities offered a mixed reception. Madrid banned his boxing exhibitions, but in Barcelona his boxing troupe was welcomed and celebrated. The success of Crozier and the other boxers led to an offer of opening his own gym, the Spanish Athletic Club, 
but Crozier continued to tour as a boxer and wrestler throughout Spain, France and Germany over the next couple of years. By November 1913, and now into his early 30s, Crozier, who had once been banned in Madrid, now found opportunity by opening his own club, the Anglo-Spanish Academy of Physical Culture and Boxing. Crozier had fallen in love with Spain, which he would now call his home, and he would begin to put down roots with his Spanish wife too. In 1916, Crozier's biggest opportunity so far came when boxing world heavyweight champion Jack Johnson was looking to make his Spanish debut. And so, on the 23rd of March, Johnson took on the challenger Crozier in a highly publicised event, a sellout at the Gran Teatro de Madrid. The fight, though, was entirely lopsided. Although Crozier survived into the seventh round out of ten, it was reported he was knocked down several times while he himself hit almost nothing but air. Johnson had been toying with him and knocked him out to a very dissatisfied crowd. Crozier would box and wrestle for several more years, but by 1925 he considered himself retired. Crozier did, however, continue to be a physical culture coach for local sports teams, particularly for the quickly growing sport of professional organised football, or soccer. Sadly, Crozier was exploited by the mayor of Madrid, who reneged on paying him for training the police there, and he was unsuccessful in litigation to claim his payment owed. Crozier continued to offer physical training, massages and boxing lessons, just to get by. Frank Crozier would also become an unrecognised and unheralded hero of Spain. In 1937 and during Franco's fascist coup, Crozier, now in his mid-fifties, sided with the Republic and volunteered at Madrid hospitals to help the wounded, even with the city under siege. Crozier could have escaped back to Britain with his British Empire passport, but stayed true to the country that was more accepting of him, and one he called home. Unfortunately, it is unknown what became of Crozier. Carlos Garcia, a modern-day lecturer of sport history and sociology, who unearthed much of the information on Crozier in Spain, is unsure if the bombings in Madrid during the fascist coup claimed his life, whether he fled the city, or whether he survived and managed to grow old in retirement. One thing is for certain, though. Frank Crozier is a name that deserves to be much more widely known as a pioneer for post-colonial black athletes the world over.